What's up you guys, Sam Burr here. Welcome back to Semi Vostok. Now today, I want to make a, a really informal video about a question, a comment that I have continuously been seeing over the past two weeks. I don't know why um, I'm getting all of these questions in the comments below in all of my videos. I'm getting lots of people messaging me on my Instagram. So I don't know if someone has made a video about this topic or someone has just done something that's got all of you guys thinking about it. I don't know. Maybe I said something, but a lot of people, and I mean a lot, and it's an unusual amount, have been asking me, hey Sam, like what is the best public transport? What's the most efficient? What is the fastest method? You know, all of those types of questions. And I'm like, well, I've kind of, I've kind of covered it before in various other videos, sometimes direct videos, sometimes not so direct, but I definitely have covered it, but I guess maybe that was some time ago and I have a whole new influx of people. So in today's video, I'm just going to go through some really, really basic things about public transport. Um, this isn't going to be some kind of really fancy video with lots of different editing and really fancy um, like screenshots and things like that. I'm really, it's really just going to be a very informal um, overview of the different things. So I really hope this video will help. I mean, a lot of you probably already know this, but you know what, maybe this will just be a nice little um, reminder of just the different basics of public transport. And you know what, it's actually good for me to talk about it as well because it's a reminder to myself and it's kind of like a wake up call as well in a good way. So I'm just going to go through everything, show you guys how I've got my public transport laid out. Um, where certain public transport is good, where it's not so good. So first of all, okay, so let's just go down through the list. So we'll start with buses. Now, buses, so let's use this suburb down here as an example. So this is Semo Sibersk. Um, so for buses, they're really good for, well, they can't really hold too much people. So it's not really that good for large amounts of people. When I do buses, it's more for collecting the smaller amounts of people in the outer suburbs that bring them to some kind of other hub. So if we look here, uh, my bus line goes on these outer suburb areas that pick up all of these people out here, but maybe you just can't be bothered to walk, so it goes around here, goes around in one loop. So it picks up all of the people in the suburbs and brings them back to this little hub here. So this hub has the train station and it also has it also has the monorail as well. So buses are really great for picking up those really small amounts of people in random areas. And when I say random, we can also look at up here. So this is another hub here. And I have a bus that goes up through here, it goes through Borovsky Heights, picks up a few people, but then it also continues all the way out to Gora Heights. So if you, for example, put a train up through here, wouldn't look too good because it's a bit too steep and the train is a little bit over the top. We do have the funicular train, but we'll get to that. So buses are really great for those really awkward small places. Um, where's another example? So out here, for example, I have, I believe, a bus loop that goes around in a circle that again meets up with this train station. And then I also, let me just open it actually. Okay, no, I don't have a loop. But we do have just this small one that goes through, collects up all of these small amounts of people, but it does meet all of the different um, train stations, any type of hub. So like I said, buses are really great for the small amounts of people, great for just picking up the random amounts. And it's good if you have like a small town and you don't want something that's really over the top. So maybe a train would look too over the top going through all, all of your small suburbs whereas a bus is all right. But the downside with buses, but the downside with buses is that they do mix in with traffic. So obviously buses are on the road. So generally, I mean, you can make um, specific bus lanes that are disconnected. Um, you can do the bus lanes, but generally buses still have to go on the road and they do mix in with all of the traffic. So if there's a traffic jam, that bus is going to be held up and 
they don't really hold too many. So how many, this holds 70. So this one's a little bit more. I believe the vanilla one is about 30. So generally not that great for huge amounts of people. So next on the list are trams. So if I show you guys my tram network. So the tram up here, it's something for, I'd say it's a little bit more than buses, but not as much as a train. So a tram is good for the more built up areas. Um, it can handle a lot more people. So if we look up through here, um, obviously there's going to be a lot of people up here because this is an industrial area. So a lot of people are going to need to get to work. So I have the tram, which is this one right here, it goes down through the suburban areas. It goes past where the buses drop them off and where the train is. And then it also, oh, there goes a plane, but it also goes through this, like for example, a built up area like this. So you can see the buildings are a bit more built up. Uh, continues over here and then this is also another built up area so I don't know what that is that a bus or so yeah you can see it comes through this more built up area so they're better so they can handle how many people so a tram can handle well this one can handle 240 so compared to a bus which sometimes it has about 30 or 40 it's going to handle a lot more. But again, it does mix in with the traffic on the road. So it's going to be on the road. And again, if there's a big traffic jam, your trams are going to be stuck in it, but you can separate it. So for example, over here, like what I've done, I've, I've got it elevated. So it bypasses uh, major intersections. It bypasses other areas and it has its own bridge. So they can really just go through it makes it all a lot easier if you do have them elevated off if possible but definitely they're good for the more inner city, inner city built up areas but again with a tram or any type of public transport make sure you link it up to other types of public transport so this one right here the tram that we just saw it actually comes down here it ends and then they can actually transfer onto another tram which will take them down this way towards the downtown area Okay, so next is the metro, so a subway basically. Now, these are really good because first of all, they are, where's mine actually? Where is it? So you can see this purple line through here. I know it's really hard to look at, but we have this purple that goes all the way through here, goes all the way through the downtown, and then all the way over to this little port area. I also have a loop for the downtown for easy movement as well. So what's really good about a subway is that it is underground. So it's going to be able to just, it's just able to go. There's not going to be any interruption. So unlike a, a bus or a tram, they, they're underground. They're completely out of sight from everything. So it is going to save you some room and they are able to handle a large capacity of people. But for me and in general, when you're using a subway, it's more for your built up areas. So it's really used for areas that have a huge amount of people trying to move around. So you wouldn't necessarily put it in an area, for example, like what we saw at the start of the video. So you wouldn't put a subway in an area that has maybe a hundred people per suburb, you know what I mean? So obviously it would be more suited for these more built up areas where there's where there's skyscrapers, there's really, really high buildings, there's economic hubs, there's office hubs, you know, all of those bits and pieces. So those are more suitable for the real inner areas of your city. So like it says right here, they travel underground at high speeds while avoiding the stress of traffic is an excellent choice when thinking mass transit in the city center. So just like I said, so that, that's a nice, easy little recap. So good for in the downtown areas um, don't make them go out into the real suburban areas because it seems a little bit weird when you do end a subway line make sure it is connected to something else because otherwise why stop it at a certain point it doesn't make sense so the next one are trains so trains are really good for long distances and a large amount of people so obviously trains they can hold a large amount of people if I can just find one that's not a train I think that's a funicular train don't know why I don't know why that's there um, okay here's one up here if we can click on it 450 people capacity on this specific one I don't know how much it is on the vanilla one but you can change it of course so if we look at how I have it all set up through here how I've done it is 
it's basically a connector between suburbs. So it's not picking up any of the local traffic. So all of the local traffic is being picked up by the buses and the trams, which then feeds all of those people onto the trains. So then the trains will actually carry everyone through the long distances. So we have the train station here, for example. So that'll help with all of these people here. It goes over along here, another train station here. So this meets with basically all of the other types of public transport. And that'll service this whole area through here. The train goes along through here, um, drops some off here, and then goes into the downtown. Um, we have another one over here in this suburb, and another one over here in this suburb. So I try to make them somewhat centralized in terms of the train stations. Um, so yeah, like I said, they do handle a lot of people. My recommendation for using trains though is try not to connect them to the roads like, like it is right here because when it's connected to a road, they do have to slow down quite a lot and obviously that's going to disrupt your traffic. So try to make them elevated and out of the way of everything else. So if we look at over here in the downtown, so you can see here I have this, all of these train lines through here, they are all elevated or actually, technically the road goes underneath and the same for here as well. So they can all glide straight through really easy. Um, same with the train line at the back. It's basically out of the way. It's not really crossing any of the main roads. It all goes over the main roads. And then if we look through here, it actually bypasses all of these small roads through here. But if, if, but just imagine if it actually did connect to all of the roads through here, that would be quite a mess because there's so many different little roads and that would be a huge cause of a potential traffic jam like, like what's going on down here. So like I said with trains, you basically make everything else feed all of the people to them, to the trains, and then the trains will carry them through the long distances. Okay, so the next one are these guys, the ferries. So I obviously use custom assets, but you can just use the vanilla ones. But I don't really like to use these as a main form of public transport. I mean, yes, they are good because if I can just click on one, um, for example, this one here, 100 people capacity, this one 200, and then this one 50. So I don't know how much the vanilla one has. I know it's not a lot. It's probably about 50 or so. Um, it, it is good if you have a big area like this, and it's, it's just good to have this as an extra option, but I wouldn't use it as your main option unless you really, really had to. So if you had bunches of little islands, then yeah, go ahead and use these because all of the islands, they might not have too many people but so for example there's a station a ferry station here there's also um, one here and there's one here and yeah they are used a lot because this is a tourist area but the main use of public transport is the train through here so um, no one is really heavily relying on the ferries as their main way but still I like to do them because they do liven up the area the water area and um, like I said they are just a great little extra option, but I wouldn't use them necessarily as your main option unless it is a really small population and a more um, island theme, maybe somewhat cut off from the rest of the world type map. Now, we can't forget the monorails. So monorails are really great because you can see they are above the road and they're actually easier to do than a train because they are on top of the road and they can just bypass everything. They're never going to be um, connected to any type of road because they are always above the ground. Even if you draw it out, just using the single um, monorail line, it's always going to be elevated. So it's going to make it a lot more easier to go through the urban areas than a train. A train might seem a little bit too big and clunky to go through here. So that's why I put a monorail. It really, they really just do glide straight through and they, they can handle a lot of people. But again, they're good for a more built up area. So you can see this whole area here, it is a really built up area. There's a lot of people in this area. Um, but it's just something a little bit nicer than a big, heavy, loud train. But you have to be careful with the monorail because generally the residential is quite sensitive to the monorails. They're going to have some noise pollution. So make sure that it's not right up against the residential. 
and um, yeah it'll look awkward if you have it in really low residential areas as well the only downside is that well for me they're not really a long-term thing so this one only goes from here along here and then stops there so they're more of a extra little option so it's, if you don't want to put your trains through here or the monorail i mean not the monorail the tram just isn't really cutting it so you need something that just glides through a bit easier it has a bigger capacity i would put that in but you can't actually make them go into a tunnel so if you for whatever reason like if we look right here see how the train it goes underneath here and it looks so much better in a tunnel. Same for over here, it goes in through a tunnel. It just looks so good. Um, again, over here, it becomes a tunnel. You can't actually do that with a monorail. So if you do have a really hilly map, you're going to be restricted if you do have some hills and things like that. So that's just something to keep in mind. And if there's something that I'm forgetting to mention about each different type of public transport, go ahead and let us all know below. Of course, there are so many different things that you can say about each thing and as I do say all of this of course I'm going to forget stuff my mind my mind is very very active I'm constantly um, thinking about things so fast that's why sometimes I ramble and I can't talk properly um, oh yeah we also have the funicular train as, as well so we'll go into that now just quickly um, the funicular train if you're not familiar with what that actually is it is a train that goes up really steep terrain so straight like through here um, and it it's just good for smaller amounts of people so if we click on there 170 okay that's actually quite a lot of people um, I know the the trains don't te technically fit in very well but I mean it's such a small detail but yeah these are really good for those small amounts of people the villages so for example you could have a bus well i do have a bus that goes up through here but in comparison to the amount of time it would take to go on a bus compared to going straight down through here the funicular train is going to be a lot faster and just easier i think so they're really great and then so if we just follow this one up here it goes all the way up here to this town so imagine if there was a bus that goes all the way from here all the way down through here that's going to take a really really long time um, funicular trains they can move a lot faster than a bus they can go over the terrain it's just easier and then same with this town over here yes there is a bus that goes up here but the funicular train is going to be a lot faster and they can just go on it so much easier than rather taking two hours to go on a bus so the next one is the planes so obviously planes are kind of self-explanatory and they don't really fit into what we're talking about so planes are just great for bringing in people um, just make sure that you have some kind of public transport set up for all of those people who are getting off the plane but speaking of being in the air we also have blimps now i never use blimps as a type of public transport because how often do you see that in real life um, if someone could tell me where blimps are a main public transport option in a city please let me know because i'm really curious um, it is a fun little option to have in the game, but I've seen people use it as a main option where it's completely overloaded. Um, I can see why you'd want to use it because it goes up and over buildings and terrain and it's going to be really easy. But generally, they're not good for large amounts of people. So next we have the cable car. I never see cable cars as a main type of public transport because each cable car surprisingly has a capacity of 30 people, which seems quite high to me um maybe they they're squished in like sardines but yeah i never see it as a main pub public transport option because of the small capacity there really isn't too many of the different little pod things for them to go through they are good for going up really steep areas but i mean if you're count if but if you're going to connect for example a big suburb here down to the ground i'd probably do a funicular train because it's going to be a lot faster and hold a lot of people compared to this so i really see cable cars as more of a little filler thing and good for tourists and maybe just just something a little bit fun just something a little bit extra but definitely not a main type of public transport and lastly we have the taxi so i like to kind of just sprinkle the taxi depots throughout the city but i never uh, use that as a main type of public transport would you categorize it as public transport i'm not really sure actually that would be good if they put uber in the game as well or some kind of form of 
ride sharing. But anyway, I never use this because, I mean, it, it is a car, so they can only hold, what, four extra people because the driver, that's five, so four people. But, I mean, it is good to just have that extra option. I usually put the depots next to some kind of big event area. So this is the sporting area. This is a big swimming pool in there. So sometimes there's big events here. Some of them might want a taxi to go somewhere. So it's just good to have that as an extra option. Now, just to show you guys, this is my overall look of my public transport network now it is very very crazy it's really hard to look at it's hard to follow so i'm not going to go through it all um but yeah there's a lot going on and this is why i don't have a lot of um traffic issues because i have really a really really good network so for example when a when something ends so for example over here the passenger train ends so they have a bus line there and they also have the subway as well so so that's something that I really wanted you guys to take out of this video. So it doesn't really matter what type of public transport you use. So if someone says, oh, trains are the best or buses, you know, if someone says whichever is the best, well, they're kind of not seeing the bigger picture because the bigger picture is that, so if you have a really good setup of public transport, then so it really doesn't matter which one you use because you have a good variety and obviously not all of them are going to be suitable for different areas so like i said throughout this video some are good for really suburban areas some are really good for high built up dense areas um, so once you work out where all of those go and hopefully this video has helped you guys understand that um, everything should be running a lot smoother and just make sure you have different network hubs so where everything can feed in where they can all meet and transfer and then that way you won't really have to think about which is the best option of public transport. There really isn't one best option if someone says there is, well there isn't because the best option is to use a good variety, mix it all up and just have a good well oiled network. Anyway, you guys, I really hope this video has helped because I've been seeing all of those people asking about it lately, so I don't know why, but I really hope this video has helped. I've also done several transport, public transport videos in the past. You could, might just have to go down, scroll down a little bit, and you'll, you'll see some throughout my channel as well, and those will be really, really helpful. So yeah, if you have any more different questions that I didn't really cover, or if there's something that I completely forgot to mention, by all means, let us know down in the comments below because I'm sure other people do read the comments as well. And sometimes I learn things in the comments as well. And sometimes I completely forget really obvious things to say, which seems really dumb, but my mind works really fast. So yeah. And um, also my Instagram is there if you'd like to message me personally. I try to respond. I try to respond to most of you if I can. I do get a lot, but I do try my hardest to talk to all of you. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. Hope this video has helped and catch you guys later.